here is an episode of Renegade Roundtable. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Rogue Radio. My name is Sarah Jane. Forgive my raspy voice. Man, you sound sick. I know I do. Because <laughs> someone likes to sleep with the window open. I'm sorry I'm warm-blooded. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, well, Terrence uh, has decided to pick the topic today. He's not telling me what it is, so... Uh, he he's not gonna he he said he wasn't gonna tell me until uh we started, you know, recording, so what is it? Today this morning at eight oh three AM we are going to be talking about how the internet has affected the younger generation. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. It is a good one. Yeah. Something I've been wanting to talk about for a while, but, um, so yeah, um, hope everyone's having a beautiful morning. Oh, please, much more beautiful than ours. Mine's good, by the way, I'm sorry, I, you're I, sick. It's just, like, someplace warm, I'm just saying. you like Miami or something. Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii's better. <sighs> but, anyways, <laughs> I hope you guys are having a beautiful morning. <coughs> I hope you guys are healthy. Hope you guys are strong and feeling good, ready to conquer the day. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Um. Thanks, guys, for listening. Um. Thank you, those in Australia and Norway, in Norway, Spain, and Spain, <laughs> and whoever else is across the country or in America listening. Um, Texas is listening. Texas. Shout out to Texas. Hey, we love the Cowboys. Go Cowboys. Well, <laughs> they're kind of disappointing right now. Well, let's not get on that topic right now. <laughs> I might have a coronary. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, like how the internet has affected um, our younger generation. I think um, a couple years ago, I think when I was about 15, 16, you know, I remember... Um, you know, there were those, there were certain phones coming out, flip phones and all this different stuff coming out. We know we had computers, but they were the big computers, the Mac computers that you had to go and you had to, you know, yeah. Well, the the, Mac computers are the modern ones now, honey. Well, like, what were they like? The 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 Microsoft. Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. The big Microsoft ones. The big chunky ones. The big chunky ones that were heavy as heck when you picked them up. The thick computers. (laughs) That go like, (laughs) ding, when when you push the on button. Every 90s kid knows who we talking about. Yeah. So if you Shout out to all 90s kids. Yeah. So if you're not a 90s, so if you're not, if you're not a 90s kid, then, uh, yeah, anyway. (laughs) Um, if you're an XYZ generation, um, I mean, God bless you. I, there's a lot of things I could say about y'all, but uh, you know what? I'm going to yeah. be nice. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, um, I think the the worst thing that has affected the younger generation is cause of the internet is because it's a distraction, a distraction from, I think really like using like your common sense and in, 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 in the intelligence that's in your, your brain. I think, you know, when I was younger, my mom was telling me, my sister, go out and play. Um, that term now in American family has gone to, sh- to crap yeah now it's go play on your phone um yep go watch tv it's not go play outside and exercise that is why our younger our younger generation our younger kids have no respect for the elders that's why they're fill it's filling their head with all kind of junk that they shouldn't be looking at and they shouldn't be focusing on right 
and they wonder why it's hard for them to sleep at night. It's hard for, you know, they don't get their schoolwork. It's hard for them to do their homework because they're, they're spending so much time on that phone or on that lap, laptop or watching you watch or a tablet watching YouTube on the computer. It's almost like it's a hypnotism for like getting out of their own reality to enter into a new one, which yeah. is very, very false. So then they grow up having this false mentality of what certain things should be, and it's a lie. Right, right. And kind of like to add on to that, um, personally with me, I'm a big fan of YouTube, but I also know what I should not watch because of like... <laughs> When I was depressed and when I was, like, in my dark place, I watched some really scary stuff. And um, I'll never, ever do it again. Because, I mean, now, like, looking back at that, like, any child could access what I've watched and be manipulated by it or be um, influenced by it. And it is really, really scary. And, um... There is pedophiles on YouTube that, you know, these kids watch. They don't realize what these people are actually doing. They don't really care. They care about the content and not what they're doing. And uh, it's shaping these kids to be um, someone that... (laughs) <laughs> they're not basically yeah I, I think so too um I also think that um one of the things that's been irritating me um is that <clears throat> you know whether you however you feel about um your kids having a cell phone at a certain age you know that's totally up to your style of parenting but um with me and my wife Sarah here we're not gonna let our kids have a phone till they're at least 16 right because between between you know six years old and 16 there's those seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen years that I don't feel like a child should have a phone because number one, they're going through puberty and they don't know what the heck they're talking about. Number, they're still trying to find. They're themselves. still trying to find themselves. So instead of asking their parents, they just have their trusty phone and they start doing some research, like about sex, and they end up on a porn site. Yep. And then now they they're get the wrong and now be, image of what be, sex actually and, is. And now between nineteen eighteen and twenty nineteen twenty. They're addicted to porn. Yep. And their whole, like, the whole image of what sex should really be is, di- like, distorted. And I'm not trying to say, like, all oh, internet is bad. The internet is a great tool for success. It's a great tool to be creative. It's a great tool to reach people. It's a great tool to um, start business. It's a great tool to um, cultivate um your talents and abilities but what but what it's not it's not a good thing to disrupt people's lives it's not a good thing to put your business all on social media it's not a good thing to um let a child have something to have access to something before it's time and maturity that's just what i believe right um, and I feel like this generation, they just don't know the simple times of life. Um, just the simple, um, sim- this the simple times of life. I Man, I remember when I was younger, and you know, my my f- my having fun was going bowling or playing outside at the park or um, going to the zoo or going to the pool and swimming, all exercise stuff. Um, and there was a time where I liked my, you know, my PlayStation, but, um, my mom always told me like, you have an hour before you go to bed and you can play your PlayStation. But after that hour you go to bed. Mm. So there was a discipline there. 
Yeah. I wasn't on it like all every day, 24 seven, five, five days a week. Yeah. Now we have like these kids on Twitch and discord as young as like eight years old, cussing out their, you know, opponents online. Now that's ridiculous. And that's to me, terrible. To me, that's ridiculous because what that's showing me is parents, where are you? Exactly. Where, where are you? Uh, where are you? And then number two, if that's my kid, he's grounded. There is no way that that you're cussing someone out. The PlayStation is out of the bedroom. That too, but there's no way you're you're saying that foul language to someone else that you don't even know. You can't even see through a video game. That that's just disrespectful to me. And there's also the problem with <laughs> children being on it for so long that that's all they obsess about and. They end up disrespecting their parents when they tell them to, you know, get out and do something else. Um, I've seen it many times, not just on the internet, but on news segments and everything. And it's almost like, like you said, Terrence, that these kids are being hypnotized by, you know, media in general and technology. When I was a kid... Um, I guess I was introduced to technology a little too early. Um, I found the internet too early. I think it was like what, when I was like 12 and, um, I liked it cause you could like just search anything you wanted, but that, you know, things would go downhill if someone like would, you know, look at something that they're not supposed to and stuff like that and so I learned the evils of the internet pretty early and the thing was is that I thought it was normal at the time and um yeah (laughs) I'm not gonna go too into it just because um you know that that's my childhood and that's just something you know I'm just going to kind of vaguely speak about that. But, um, what was I going to say? No, but even, you know, when I was introduced to the internet, I, the only real, um, piece of technology that I really, really loved was my boom box. So I would just listen to music all the time and dance to it and everything like that. So, And again, listening to music... It's totally different than you're on Facebook scrolling. Oh yeah. Now I'm gonna tell you guys something. The first thing that I that I encountered with social media was a thing called MySpace. I know a lot of you guys probably been on it. Um, that was before Facebook. It was called MySpace. You made your own profile. Oh yeah. You had to have your own personal song. So when someone saw your your MySpace, profile, they, they would own theme song. whatever your theme song was. That's what people labeled you as. <laughs> My theme song was Tupac, and it was California <laughs> Love. So they were like, "Oh, he must be a thug." No, I just like the song. But what I'm trying to get at is now we have Facebook, where Facebook is. The label of Facebook to me, and if I could identify Facebook in one word, is me, me, me. Oh, yeah, look at me, 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 me. And I have a Facebook, um, but I only post of things of encouraging of me and my wife, Mm -hmm. or sometimes I, 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 you know, I'm I'm, I'm a, I'm a man who believes in God, so sometimes I I post encouraging scriptures, um, even if, um, you know, encouraging quotes, <coughs> but, um, that's it. I don't, I don't put my business out on there. I don't, um, just broadcast the <coughs> world of, you know, how my day's going. Um, I think some things are just private and some things are just meant to be in the four walls of your household. So, exactly. yeah. And, um, <coughs> I'll keep going. I forgot what I was going to say. Mm, I'm sure you'll remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. And, again, and again, guys, we're not these old timers that 
can't get can't get into yeah. technology. You know, we're all in it. Yeah, like, like, like we're, we're like not, like we're all in it. Like, yeah, we 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 have Facebooks. We we've encountered everything. We, we do everything. We both are into YouTube. But what we're trying to say is, this younger generation does doesn't even know what it was like before. Right before there was, you know. And the thing is, is that like every generation has their own adaptation to culture and. Like, um, you know, the boomer generation had television as their biggest influencer. Yep. Millennials um, had the internet and, you know, a little bit of social media. But then this new generation, I'm not sure what it's called. I call it the XYZ generation just because it's one of those. (laughs) And everything's given to them. Everything is offensive. Everything... They're just blindly passionate about something. They have their emotions into politics just because of what social media has fed them. And it's all about themselves. Here's what I found. Hear that? That was Suri. Or Alexa. Like, come on, man. Like, just for that example. Everything's given to this new generation. Like... You have, you really have to have a, a a voice like tell you like what to do. You listen to Alexa or you listen to Surrey more than your own parents. That's straight bull crap. <laughs> Siri is a searching tool. Um, Still, yeah. But the thing is, you that, put like, search and it says, "This and, is Surrey. Yeah, I'm gonna help you." What our, do you want to search today? <laughs> in our generation, like. We had to search on Google or Ask Jeeves, okay? Ask who? Jeeves. It was like a search engine. I never heard of that one. Oh, okay. Well, that was Ask like... Jeeves. What <laughs> kind of name is Jeeves? <laughs> it was cool. Ask Jeeves. Like, you know, a butler. Jeeves. <laughs> Jeeves, like, like a butler. You would actually go there and there was like this butler just standing there next to the search bar. Oh my god. How can I help you today? <laughs> yes, I need to search recipes on Norwegian stuff. <laughs> um, I love Norwegian food, by the way. Never had it in my life. I I want to try it. Their their stuff looks amazing and healthy. So, shout out to Norway. Anyway, <laughs> um Yeah. Yeah, um, I think, uh, I think if you guys have kids, and <clears throat> I think it's very important that you guys, um, really, like, watch them now. I feel like there's yeah. a lot of things going around. Um, number one, babe, you remember that, that game that came out, um, it's called Mammo? Uh-uh. The one where... <clears throat> Mammo. The 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 Chinese one. No. The one where it tells like them to kill themselves and what's that thing called? I have no idea. It was going viral like a few months ago, and all the kids would just be obsessed with it. And it would oh, tell the, you mean the things. blue whale thing? I don't know. It's oh, Momo. 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 That it wasn't Momo. a game. It was uh <laughs> A profile on WhatsApp. Well, it was this weird demon looking dude. And I said, what the heck is it? And he looked like he was from China. <laughs> he probably had the corona. <laughs> it's so terrible. We gotta get crap for that. Um, okay, well, Terrence doesn't necessarily know too much about the Momo uh, thing. He does know, like, a lot, um, like, what he's heard and stuff. But um, Momo was a profile that was created that um, uh, kind of like hurled insults at people who contacted uh, them, whoever they were, telling them to kill themselves and just telling them, oh, like, I'm watching you and I'm going to come to your house and kill you sort of stuff. And the profile picture was actually a piece of horror art from Japan and uh, had big eyes and a really slit mouth. It it, it was kind of terrifying. 
And um, so that's where the Momo thing came uh, came to be. Um, before that, it was the Blue Whale Challenge, which was um, something that I actually uh, had to research just because uh, I didn't know, like, at the time what it was until, like, I saw a news article on Facebook a few years ago about it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and it's basically about um, you get connected to this person, this anonymous person, and they give you challenges each day. And um, each challenge is worse than the other. Um, it'll start probably with, you know, watching a horror movie or something depressing or listen to, listening to a certain music that this person has decided to like recommend you and it's demented it's depressing and horrifying and um then it goes to like self harm like self mutilation cutting um drawing a blue whale with your with a razor blade on your arm like that's where the challenge gets its name and then um, like further on and further on they'll be like okay well just lay on the train tracks until you hear like a train or something like that just to terrify you and in the end you end up killing yourself and because that'll be like the last challenge and they will find out if you did or didn't do it and I'm like why would any child decide, you know, to do that? You know, we've been taught in, in or at least in my high school, that suicide is, is wrong and that you should get help and that cyberbullying and bullying is wrong. I was, I, I was, you know, I had education from, you know, the very uppity education system. Um you know, in my city, and we were taught how to treat disabled people, we were taught how to treat people with depression, mental illness, you know, suicidal thoughts and everything, we were taught how to handle those situations, but I guess it would depend on different schools and different curriculums that care enough to have those lessons in, uh, you know, their schools and stuff like that. Did they have stuff like that at your school, babe? No. Oh my god, tell me about it. There's nothing really much to tell. I just know they didn't have it. They never once had, like, an anti-bullying campaign? No. Nope. That's terrible. Wow. Okay, so I guess it does depend on where you go. Yep. That's really, really strange. See, yeah, I, I will, I would say, yeah, um, I went to, um, a high school called Selfview, and I, I guess, yeah, I, I would say it was pretty uh, richy rich a little bit, even though my parents weren't rich. <laughs> um, so yeah, I guess it does depend on you know the curriculum and stuff like that. Um, but I was constantly told not to do drugs, not to bully people, and everything like that in schools so to me ha a he hearing somebody commit suicide just because someone told them to is very foreign to me because we were taught how to think for ourselves and how to take care of ourselves while other schools probably didn't have that curriculum or could not afford that type of education and it is very important to have. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's important to have that education. Sometimes. Not all the time. What do you mean sometimes? Uh, some people are just not educate, education built. You gotta elaborate now. What do you mean? What you just said. Back it up. Uh, according to what? According to what you just said. Prove, well, prove your point that it's sometimes beneficial. 
Well, because most people are not really, um, are never gonna be college bound or. Oh no, I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about like anti bullying. Oh. Teaching, like having that campaign in schools. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, um, <laughs> I think, uh, I remember like the, the first cell phone that I got, I think it was a flip phone and all I could do on it was text yeah, and call. I don't think I could like ever get it like on the internet or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember that was when I was 16. When I was 20 is the first time I could get on the internet. And I was so amazed and so excited that I could get on the internet with my phone. And I was like, oh my God, like I get to look up stuff. But then like, I remember like when I was younger, of course, like every guy does it. I start looking at porn sites. Mm-hmm. I get I get hot in the pants, and I'd be like, <laughs> I I type in hot chicks, or I type in Uh-oh. hot big booties, <laughs> and then a booty will pop up, and it start jiggling up like ooh. Oh my and I get God. so excited. I'm just being real right now. I get so excited, and then like the I, every time I'd want to go go back to it and do it. But what I'm trying to say is, look at what that did to my mind. Look at what that did to my thought process. What so, did it do? Well, it, it froze my mind. So throughout the day, it's like what you do at one time. The next day, you're gonna be thinking about that, and you're gonna do it again, oh, yeah. and again, yeah, and again, and again. Then you're gonna have an addiction. Yep. Rogue Radio will be right back after this message. You want to know how I make some unique podcasts? If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. For one, it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, and they're easy to use. Anchor will distribute your podcast uh, for free so that it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download your free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's really fun. Come and join the Renegade family. All right? Anyway, that's all we have for today. Thank you very much for listening. See you guys.